Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special Belmont Media Center broadcast for this pregame show for Soccer Night in Belmont. Today, the Belmont Marauder boys and girls varsity soccer teams take on their counterparts from the Watertown Raiders. I'm Scott Landry, joined by Jeremy Meserve and Royce Pang on cameras, and Rob Gray here on commentary with me on this rainy fall day. It's our joy to welcome you to the broadcast, and thank you for tuning in. So, Rob, eighth soccer night in Belmont. What is it? Why is it different from a typical varsity soccer game? And why has it been such a success in its eight years? Well, it's interesting. We actually have rain bookends for soccer night. Uh, year one, it rained like this. And in year, and it's, uh, year eight, it's raining. In between, we had six years of beautiful weather. But I think what it boils down to for the players is this is the, the premier match of the year for the boys and girls varsity teams in Belmont and their opponents accepting any playoff appearances. This, this is it. The big crowd under the lights with all the pageantry. We can see that the field is decked out in, in flags. The, uh, the Phoenix Cup, the trophy that's awarded, uh, is displayed on the way in. We have uh, thousands of fans, usually. We'll see about tonight with the weather. We might have thousands watching us. And hundreds of youth soccer players uh, as well who participate in the festivity. So it's really special. It connects the Belmont soccer community from really kindergarten through the 12th grade. You and John Carson uh, co-founded Soccer Night in Belmont. Many other communities are now doing something similar, but what was the inspiration for Soccer Night in Belmont eight plus years ago when you and John said, we should do this in the town of Belmont? I think it was really football, American football, Friday Night Lights. Uh, we saw, uh, we see those games everywhere under the lights and uh, uh, John was a soccer coach. I was a soccer coach. We had kids in the youth soccer program in the high school programs and we said, hey, soccer deserves a Friday Night Lights type of game as, as well. We decided to go with Saturday Night Lights. Uh, and it's really been great. I mean, the community, we've had more than 10,000 people over eight years watching these games, if not 15,000 people from both Belmont and the, and the opposing communities. Many years, this is the biggest gathering, I think, in the town of Belmont in the calendar year. Just the number of people that come and and partake in this. And a large part of that is the partnership between Soccer Night in Belmont with Belmont High School Athletics, with Belmont Soccer Association. Talk a little bit about how more and more organizations have wanted to become a part of Soccer Night uh, since it was founded. Well, what we hoped for back in two, 2016 when it started was to, to make the connection between the younger players and the high school players. Because let's face it, the, the youth program in Belmont, Belmont Soccer Association, is the feeder for success at the high school level. And in fact, many of the players walking out tonight, you'll see it in a few minutes, holding the hands of, of young youth soccer players. Eight, seven years ago, they were holding the hands of then high school players and walking out onto this field. So I think for a lot of the players tonight, it's really something they've been looking forward to their whole soccer lives. And that's what we were seeking to do, to knit it together back in 2016. We didn't know if it was going to work, uh, but the crowds keep coming back and the volunteers keep showing up and the players keep being excited about it. So uh, it's still going on under the uh, capable hands this year, handed over to Pedro Santos and Sean Goulding, who've taken over to, to run Soccer Night, which uh, John and I appreciate. We enjoyed doing it for seven years, but it's time for the next generation, and uh, it, it looks great. They've done a great job. Pedro and Sean have daughters on the girls' team, which we'll see second uh, tonight. That game will start approximately 7 p.m. The boys' varsity game will start approximately at 5 p.m. after the entrance, which is worth watching. So the pro there is a pregame show here on Belmont Media because it's worth it. But right off the top, would like to thank the folks that make this happen. Besides Pedro and Sean, uh, Belmont Soccer Association has promoted this hard. The parents of music students are doing a lot for hospitality and feeding everybody here tonight. Friends of Belmont Soccer do so much to support the high school, varsity, boys and girls, and all the programs 
uh, f soccer programs at the high school. Belmont Printing, Belmont Media Center, Puma, who has a special place in the awarding of the player of the game. Conley's over on the Watertown la line, Phoenix Landing, and the Pep Band will be playing in both games uh, during uh, some of the breaks. So a large number of people, we see all the young kids lining up for their pageant. One of the things that each of the players will be wearing is a color wristband, Rob. Talk about what, what that color signifies for each player. We thought it would be exciting at the first soccer night uh, here in Belmont that the youth teams are assigned by color, the orange team, the light blue team, etc. And we thought it would be nice to connect those high school players the initial year that we did soccer night with the young kids playing, the youth soccer players, by having them wear a, a sweatband that was the color of their then we call the Belmont second soccer team, the first three years of Belmont youth soccer. Um, a lot of kids still had their uniform jerseys from back then. So if you were on the orange team and you're a varsity boys or girls player, you would wear an orange wristband. And it, it's both something that harkens back to your experience in Belmont, but also something for the, the kids to see like, hey, I'm on the orange team and that big varsity player out playing under the lights uh, was on the orange team too. We think it give, gave the youth players something to aspire to and it was sort of a fond recollection for the, for the varsity players. When I first got to know Coach Neiman Kenkray, the coach of the Belmont Boys Varsity, he was coaching kindergarten the orange team against my wife and I coaching the yellow team. Uh, and some of the players, three in fact, who were on that initial orange team for him are Belmont Varsity soccer players now. So it's a case in point. They all remember it fondly. So his son, Sachel, who's one of the captains, was on that orange team. Ben Mellitz was on that team. And Clement Bula Bula, I think is how we pronounce his last name, one of the goalies on the team, was on that orange team. So, Rob, we're seeing uh, on the far side of the field the theme. We live for the nights we remember. Plus, we're seeing... Uh, it looks like maybe 35 or so flags. Tell me about the flags. So the, the, the whole concept of the, the parade coming out and the pageantry really comes from international soccer. And if you've ever watched international soccer on TV, you have the, the parade out with the, the young children mascots holding the hands of the players and um, the music playing and the national anthems. And to, to give Soccer Night an international flair, we decided to, to get a flag uh, to represent the heritage of uh, all the players on the field. Um, so if, if you're of Norwegian heritage, we got a Norwegian flag and we, we put it up on the far fence. Um, I think you said 35 flags now, pretty amazing over the years, um, uh, all the all the different players that we've had from from different heritage heritages of soccer and uh, let's face it soccer was imported here to the United States from the world so we wanted to have the world represented and the what we're about to see is is that parade with the mascots coming out on the field for the national anthems with the players uh, it really makes the players feel like they're almost in, uh, in, in an Olympic event or a World Cup type event. And I think we're seeing them just walking out right now. We'll see the procession, Watertown coming from your right and in their away white uniforms, Belmont uh, walking in in their maroon home uniforms, leading the Belmont line. Their two co-captains, Sachel Kenkri and Nikola Stefanovic, number 21. And you can see there, Scott, the wristbands. Uh, if you if you can see it on the camera, on the Belmont players representing their Belmont youth soccer teams, you can see the the different colors uh, of the youth players' jerseys. I see yellow. I see red. I see white. I see Belmont's maroon. Um, and uh, some Watertown youth players as well. We've always uh, extended an open invitation to the visiting team to have their youth soccer association participate as well. It builds the crowd and, and uh, many of those towns don't have an event like this. So we wanted them to be able to participate as well. 
this is the first time I think uh, you would know that the two teams that matched up last year are back for Soccer Night in Belmont. Last, last year was a tremendous success. Particularly, I remember the boys game went to uh, unofficial PKs at the end. It was tremendously exciting. Watertown was able to pull it out after their goalie made some phenomenal saves. Why is Watertown back, do you think, this year? Is it because of last year's successful? Matchup? Well, they, they were very enthusiastic, the, the Watertown coaches, the, the school system, the youth soccer program. And uh, it they really helped build the crowd. It was a great, great crowd last year. So we, we thought it, it made sense to do it again. We're at the mercy of the athletic department and their scheduling. Um, but uh, it was com very competitive last year, and hopefully it'll be very competitive here tonight. Of course, I hope Belmont wins, but, <laughs> but we're looking forward to uh, some good games. We can hear the music now, the Champions League music playing over the sound system, which is what you would see at an Eng English Premier League game. And we'll have a national anthem uh, pr presented by middle schoolers. Uh, here in Belmont, I'm not sure if the Watertown Middle School is also participating in that. We'll, we'll listen for the public address system, but I'm glad the weather is holding out. There were forecasts earlier this week that would be in the middle of whatever it's called, Tropical Depression, Ophelia. Um, I think we're on the edge of that. There's a little bit of rain here, but it's not a downpour. There's a little bit of wind, but it's not crazy yet. And we will, uh, we hope that continues. Sorry for the umbrella blocking your broad, broadcast view. We will get that moved. So these players who you see out here in uh, dozens more players, Scott, will be during the halftime break participating in small-sided games on the field under the lights. So that's really exciting for these, you know, five, six, eight-year-old soccer players as well to get a chance to play on the big high school field get a taste of that, hopefully work hard to get here themselves in, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th grade, make the varsity team. I coached, as you did, a lot of youth soccer from kindergarten through eighth grade for my three children in Belmont. My most enjoyable thing was coaching kindergarten soccer for all three, and you can see a lot of kindergartners there. The for sure. joy for the game of soccer starts then. So now we'll let you listen in to the public address system. You're listening to public address announcer Al Gledhill. group of young people singing the national anthem. Not sure how well uh, the audio carried all the way up here. It was a little bit soft. And they're I from the Chenery School. Chenery, Chenery School. We don't call it middle school anymore. We here should in say Belmont. hello to uh, Sarah Carson, the director, who's, who's homesick but helped organize all, all of those kids to sing. They did a great job, even if we couldn't hear it too well over our microphones up here in the broadcast booth. Coming back again, they, they do it almost every year. 
Um, our public address announcer will talk uh, starting lineups, but we will do that um, ourselves here for Belmont. Um, they play a unique system. Um, it's not traditional. Coach Neiman is an extremely bright, bright uh, man and uh, soccer coach. So he's uh, looked at what he has in terms of talent and he's trying to optimize. Thomas Borkowski will start as the goalkeeper tonight. Uh, three center backs, Alex Servatopoulos, Alex Duda, and Sam Kutzman. Two wing backs, Alex Cook. Alex is the son of the assistant coach, Ben Cook, on this team. And then Owen Filler. And then two positions called double pivot, essentially midfielders with some special responsibilities, Andrew Schreiner and Nicholas Stefanovic. Attacking midfielder, Patrick Tang. Uh, in a free attacking position, Sachel Kenkre. And then the striker, and Sachel's a captain, the striker is Daniel Liu uh, tonight for Belmont. Um, it'll be interesting to see Bel Belmont's style, Rob. They're playing much more attacking defensively when the other team wins possession of the ball uh, this year. So that is a little bit of a change from last year where they were much more patient, and it led to fewer goals, but also fewer goals given up and fewer goals scoring. I think that they're aiming to be much more wide open tonight. It seems like uh, they're willing to take risks by sending their back line forward to try and help the offense get numbers and score. Uh, of course, they'd sorely like a win here tonight against Watertown. In, uh, in the prior seven years of soccer night, they, ha they have a 1-4-2 and two record in this match. Um, last year's game was exciting, but Belmont was just this close to getting the win. I'm sure they'd like to get a lead here tonight, and I expect them to press in the first few minutes of this match. So coming out for Watertown, their goalie will be, uh, it looks like, um, we, we got a list of players, but not starters from them. It looks like their goalie will be Luka Misik, one of their captains. Their other captains, they have two midfield captains, Cyrus Kiani and Michael Jokic. And then Roy uh, Nicholas will anchor the back line, a defender. Um, the other players for them um, will be Dominic Taccio, Matt Seip, Daniel Heap, Adam Wainwright, Nicholas Corrales, Alex Faria, Pedro Borges, Jonathan Coelho, Abbas Khan, Murchic, Badalyan, Jelani Taim, and Aiden Anker. So that's clearly more than 11. They're not all on the field, but um, they'll all play in this game. And I think some were a game time decision from Watertown. So we're just about ready to be underway. That's the kickoff. Welcome to Soccer Night in Belmont. Scott Landry, Rob Gray, and Jeremy Meserve here. Ball already in and a score within 15 seconds off a deflection. Daniel Lou's hip was the one that scored that. The, the goalie was playing it as a shot and it deflected. And Belmont is already up, Rob. How about that, Scott? First 15 seconds of the game. I mean, Belmont did a great job building up that play, even though it was quickly a uh, wide open player on the left, did the proper thing, crossed it into a dangerous area near the penalty spot, and good things happen when you feed the balls into the center of the, of the box. Sure, too. Owen Filler uh, was the, the person who took the shot down the left side. I don't think he was passing. I think he was shooting. I don't think Daniel Liu was intending to deflect it off his hip, but Belmont will take it. Belmont up right off the bat, 1-0 on soccer night. This is Alex Cook now on the right. Sacho Kenkre, the midfielder. Watertown wins the ball here. Good step up by Stefanovic and out. So great way to spur Belmont on, but if you're Watertown, they've probably never given up a goal that fast in their lives going back to kindergarten soccer. That's kind of crazy. Dis disheartening for Watertown, I'm sure, but uh, a lot of time left, of course, especially when the goal happens in the first 15 seconds. So this is Watertown on the throw-in. Belmont is intending, according to Coach Neiman Kenkray, to uh, pressure the ball every time Watertown has it. Um, we'll see. It looked, uh, they clearly are doing that right at the beginning. Nice ability to hold the ball. 
by Pedro Borges for Watertown. Into the quarter now, centers right to Borkowski for an easy save. That was 16 for Watertown. Evan Kurth, who was looking for the header just a little bit too far up. Nice move there by Owen Filler. Now up to Daniel Liu, 18 for Belmont. Well and defended by Watertown, back to Filler. We see that aggressiveness of the, the Belmont system there. That's, that's offside, that goal will be called back. Uh, Filler really overlapping on the left. That's how they scored the first goal. He just got forward on that play as well. And although it was offside, uh, it was a dangerous ball into the center again. And another deflection. So Belmont will, I wonder if they would have um, seen something on recordings of games, but they've been working it down the left side of the field to Filler, and Filler has a specific game plan to carry it and then center it to Daniel Liu, and they've gotten two deflections off of that. Belmont's competing against Watertown in this game. The broadcast crew is competing against the umbrellas in front of us. And currently it's about even. Filler We're threw on the outside again there for a cross, Scott. That, that, that seems to be a play that Belmont's going back to quite a bit. They must like the matchup down the left side. And we'll see if uh, Watertown tries to adjust on that. Watertown trying for the pass uh, to number 11. It uh, goes uh, a little bit too far for him, and it goes out of bounds. That's Pedro Borges, who's been all over the field thus far. Back to Sam Kutzman for Belmont. Up to Patrick Tang. Back to Owen Filler. Now Nicholas Stefanovic tries the through ball to Daniel Liu. Well defended by Watertown. Chested by Patrick Tang. Now Stefanovic. Good touch by Sachel Kenkre. Back to Patrick. Tang. Pa Tang looking for a foul on that. Uh, ref referees are going to let him play. Now back to Kutzman. Alex Duda, one of the three center backs. Over to Alex Servatopoulos, number five. Trying Watertown a uh, little nervy in the back so far, Scott. Uh, a slick field. You have to be nervous as a center back. Uh, the ball skipping through. Uh, both teams are trying to keep the, the ball on the ground, keep it out of the air so you don't get those, those skippy balls that are hard to control. Certainly the pressure Belmont has put on a couple of times already will make the Watertown backs play a little bit faster. Nice move here by Watertown. Attempted pass to the corner, goes a little bit long. It'll be a goal kick for Belmont. Not a lot of possession by either team thus far. If we had a stopwatch, it would probably be about equal. Of course, Belmont has the 1-0 lead, so they're probably gonna seek to possess the ball a little bit more here. Of course, they'll keep pressing, but I think they'd love to connect some passes, burn some time, and see if they can't tire out Watertown. Just settle in, relax. When you have a big game like this under the lights with a bigger crowd than normal, Sometimes the tendency in the first five, 10 minutes can be you want to hit the home run ball. You want to get the goal, just like Belmont did. A little dangerous of a pass from Burkowski back to Kutzman. Kutzman was able to win it and clear it. That'll be a foul um, on Kenkre. Um, Kenkre tries to find Owen Filler for the header, goes up, not able to win it. Nice battle there with Dominic Taccio, the right back for Watertown. Good aggressive play by Filler there, but got the, the whistle for jumping in. It'll be a Watertown free kick. We did see Belmont connect seven or eight passes there. Trying to settle it down. Let's see if they switch the field here and get to some open space. Sacho Kenkrey, number 10 for Belmont in the middle, was last year's Middlesex League runner-up for MVP. Because of that, because of his overall talent, uh, his teammates look for him in the middle often from the back. They've been able to connect with him, but Watertown has scouted Kent Gray, and they're not giving him too much space yet. Kent Gray, the captain, along with uh, Nikola Stefanovic as well for two Belmont. Two seniors. 
Both been on the varsity since sophomore year. That's Daniel Liu, unable to win it, but it comes back to Filler. Turn over there to Watertown. Um, Stefanovic to Patrick Tang, now back to Kutzman, to Stefanovic. Watertown doing a nice job of stepping into the uh, standard passing angles given Belmont's formation. Double header there, Watertown has the ball just outside the 18. Good turn there and cleared out by Alex Servatopoulos, the right center back for Belmont. It'll be a Watertown throw in. They quickly throw it in. Belmont pressuring. Now up top, Daniel Liu, he was onside. We'll see if he can get it off. He takes the shot and it goes over the goal. Smart play by Daniel Lucy and the goalie was out of position. I'm sure he would have liked to not get as much height on that shot, Rob. He was also alone with three Watertown defenders, so why not take a crack, chip the goalie. A little bit high, but we saw that ball skip through and give Belmont a chance on the, on the slick surface from not heavy rain, but definitely a bit of a drizzle. Foul on uh, Schreiner for Belmont. It'll be a Watertown uh, free kick. Thanks for joining us. If, you're, if you joined us late, Belmont scored about 15 seconds into the game. Uh, Daniel Liu on the goal, uh, the assist from Owen Filler. This is Liu, well defended by Watertown. Ball won now by Andrew Schreiner. Now up to Owen Filler and kicked, and kicked wide by Watertown. It'll be Belmont's throw in the Watertown offensive end. Or Belmont's offensive end, Watertown defensive end. Belmont's 1-1-1 one, one, one thus far this season. They'd Water like to get it to two wins tonight, above 500. Had several games rained out. Watertown comes into this game 3-3-1. Three, three and one. Pretty even thus far for Belmont. Uh, four goals scored, five against on their goal differential, minus one. They've equalized that with the, the early strike here tonight. Belmont uh, tied their last game on Thursday night, 2-2 against Reading. Earlier in the week on Tuesday night, they lost a close 2-0 game to Winchester. It was a fairly even battle. Winchester, a really strong team. Ranked number 13, I believe, in the, in the Globe top 20 right now, Winchester, along with two other teams in the Middlesex League, uh, Arlington and Lexington on the boys' side. So Belmont has its work cut out for it with uh, two games against each of those three teams. Lexington always a threat to win the state championship in the Division I here in Massachusetts. That's uh, Alex Cook defending number three for Belmont. Um, uh, Belmont was lucky Cook was able to get a foot on that ball, otherwise it was almost a break-in from Watertown on the left there. It looked like that is Abbas Khan for Watertown, one of their midfielders. Now Watertown will have their first corner kick. Their captain midfielder, Cyrus Kiani, will take the corner. Good hooking shot. Both teams able to get a little bit of their bodies on it. Now back to Kiani. Now up to Pedro Borges with his left, but straight to Thomas Borkowski, his second save. Nice distribution right off the bat. Uh, referee blows the whistle. Alex Cook uh, is down, but he was able to get up, but he's calling for a sub. So I think he's holding his hand or his finger. Maybe a bloody nose or something where he, he knows he has to come off the field. Just a little bit of a collision right at the 18. 
as Watertown shot and he looked to, to block the shot. Senior Ben Mellitz is coming in for Belmont. He'll play the right uh, wing back. If you're new to soccer, wing backs run like crazy. Uh, when Watertown will have the ball, they'll be playing like a defender. When Belmont will have the ball, they'll be playing like a midfielder, running up and down the edge of the field. Scott, just looking at those wristbands we talked about uh, representing Belmont youth soccer out there that the players are wearing, I'm, I'm seeing three orange, I'm seeing a royal blue, I'm seeing a light blue, I'm seeing a black. So uh, a lot of Belmont youth soccer teams represented here tonight on the Belmont side. I see red, uh, our goalkeeper for Belmont. Good to see Alex Cook back at the center line, waiting for his chance to get back into the game. Also hearing the sounds of the Belmont High School pep band here in the stands tonight, playing in the rain. We thank them. Always a great thing to have the pep band here. Makes it like one of those Friday night light football game sorts of feels. For Watertown, Max, uh, sorry, Abbas Khan coming in number two as Alex Cook comes in and Ben Mellitz uh, comes back out. You can see over on the Belmont sideline, Sachel Kenkray, Belmont captain, coming over to get some instructions from his dad and coach, Neiman. Big throw in. The header won by Watertown. Interesting that uh, they have Owen Filler take the throws on the right side. Uh, his throws must be fantastic if they're having him switch to the other side of the field to take the throw in in the offensive end. They're treating it like a corner kick. Uh, I imagine that, that Owen's having a hard time getting great grip on the ball in the slick conditions tonight. So uh, that, that one probably didn't go as far as he would have liked. He gets another chance here. Temperatures in the 50s, so you don't need to wear gloves because your hands would be super cold. But I've seen players, uh, particularly those that take throw-ins, wear some gloves to just get a better grip on the ball for throws. This is Daniel Liu against the center back, number seven for Watertown. Roy Nicholas, their captain. That looks like it's going to be a good battle all game. Good win there by Schreiner. Now to Kent Cray. He lets it loose, and it goes over the crossbar. Hits the football goal post. Not a bad opportunity for Kent Cray to take that one from where he was. I always told my team, Scott, good things happen when you shoot, and uh, that could have gone in. It could have been a rebound and an easy follow. Well, Belmont scored already. They're up 1-0, and it was on a shot that... Uh, we think was an unintended deflection by Daniel Liu, uh, 15 seconds into the game off a shot by Owen Filler. Nothing the Watertown goalkeeper could do about that. It was, it was one of those deflections back against the grain. But since then, it's been a fairly even game, wouldn't you say, Rob? Yeah, I don't think a possession advantage for for either side, a little bit favorable to Belmont. Nice I would pass say. by Kent Gray to Daniel Louis shoots, and he has his second goal of the game. Beautiful pass by Kent Gray, and there's a Belmont player down in the box. I believe it's the goalkeeper for Watertown ah. who's down. Uh, but getting up, Belmont celebrating in the corner by their bench. And Watertown calls timeout to. Check on their goalie, Luka Misic. Belmont goes up 2-0. I think it's fair to say we have a front runner for player of the game already. We'll see what uh, Daniel Liu can do. Daniel's a junior, uh, played a good amount last year, but this year uh, Belmont's starting striker. The position everybody wants to play as a youth soccer player, that and goalie, I think, because if you have great passes like we just saw, you get good opportunities to score. Everybody likes to be the guy that scores the goal. 
What I was about to say as the ball hit the back of the net, Scott, was that the, the possession was pretty even, but Belmont was starting to get some turnovers uh, uh, right in front of the of, of the goal between 25 and 35 yards out in Watertown's half. And that's, in fact, pretty much what set up that goal there, a nice a nice pass and a, and a good finish. What was interesting to me is Watertown has defended Sacho Kenkre well so far this game. Every time he's had the ball in the middle, middle of the field, it's like two or three players have been around him. Now, he received that ball much deeper than usual, and the first instinct for Watertown was that their backs backed off of Kenkre. So he was able to just survey, where are my options? And Daniel Liu had leverage on the defender, meaning that Sacho could just pass it in front of Daniel, and Daniel should be able to receive it. Daniel took two small touches and then drilled it in the back of the net. Great pass, great shot. Uh, Watertown, I'm sure the coach is saying, we can't give them that much space in the midfield. Belmont is too dangerous if we're going to let a player like Sacho pick who he wants to pass to. No, and nice weight on that pass, which, which allowed... Uh, the control and the turn to, to get off a quality shot and put Belmont up 2-0 with uh, 24 minutes left in this first half. A very, very positive start for the Marauders. Belmont, a very dangerous team offensively this year. A lot of talent in the midfield and uh, up top. Um, almost everybody in an offensive position for the Belmont boys varsity team is a returning varsity player who got a lot of playing time. Their, their back line have been players who have been all on the varsity, but they didn't play as much last year. So this is their first significant varsity action. This is Patrick Tang in the middle of the field. Patrick takes a shot. It's deflected one by Watertown. Another play where one of Belmont's dangerous midfielders was able to uh, move 10, 15 yards without much, uh, without a defender stepping in front of him. Quite a surprise. I'll tell you, Scott, the crowd is excited. We've had quite a crowd fill in here despite the rain in Belmont. I'd, I'd estimate we're at 1,000 people or more. Even uh, the Watertown side is filled on, filled in beside uh, behind, excuse me, the international flags across the field and the We Live for the Nights We Remember banner. Potential chance for Watertown here, looking for the whistle and they get it. Good battle over there. They call Alex Servatopoulos, Belmont's right center back on the foul. It'll just be outside the box, so it's not a penalty kick, but it's a, it's a, a free kick for Watertown. With from a wind. dangerous spot, dangerous spot here. Both a spot that would be scorable and under any conditions, but when you're dealing with wind and a little bit of rain and a wet ball, it becomes even more dangerous. I assume that is their captain, um, number 10, taking the shot. Ball rolls wide, Watertown's asking for a corner kick. The referee is going to uh, give it to Thomas Borkowski to take a goal kick. That was uh, Cyrus Kiani on the free kick for Watertown. I thought Watertown might take a crack there at shooting on goal. Uh, it was at a bit of a wide angle, so I can see why they didn't. Alex Cook was dragged down there. We heard many fans around us, even with the headsets on, say, whoa! And uh, maybe the ref heard because it was a late whistle, but Belmont will take it. Short ball to just replay it. Kankri back to Stefanovic, now up to Schreiner. And I like this from Belmont, just possessing the ball. No, no need to lob that ball into the box and try to score. Let's keep the ball. Let's connect some passes. It's proper soccer. You don't see it from a lot of high school teams. But just get the play started. Don't, don't dump it in every time you have a free kick. Referee had let himself get nutmegged on that pass along the the back line, good, good move by the referee. Now up to Alex Cook. One by Watertown. Daniel Liu being very aggressive up top, making it difficult for Watertown's backs to pass it along the line. Good pressure there, excellent by Nikola Stefanovic. Belmont wins it, now to Sajo Kenkre. Takes a couple of touches, now into back to Owen oh, Filler just a little bit too long 
for Filler. Belmont looking for their third goal of the first half on that one. I'm not sure the other players saw Filler sneak through there. He was wide open to walk into the net. Good touches by Kent Gray. Another great pass to try to set up one of his teammates. Belmont is running harder to put pressure on the defensive back line than I've seen the team play in three years. It's, it's a very exciting way to do it. We've already seen it result in a couple of turnovers. If the players have the fitness for it and they can keep it up, that will put pressure both physically and mentally on the Watertown team that they just can't take anything for granted back there. There's no time to relax, no time to breathe. A lot of high pressure there. I counted eight Belmont players inside uh, the 40-yard line on the football field, but you know, which is 10 yards inside Watertown's half. But it's also the pace that they're going. They're, uh, it looked like they were going uh, full out uh, to get there, which um, it gets your attention, I'm sure, if you're Watertown. Tempted turn by Owen Filler. Turned over, number 11 shoots it and puts it in. What a shot by Watertown to get within one. That is number 11, Pedro Borges with his left. It seemed to have some weird spin, some weird wind thing going on, but like we were talking a couple minutes ago, Rob, when you were coaching, you wanted players, when they had the opportunity to shoot, let it go, and he let it rip, and he scored it. Pedro Borges with just under uh, 20 minutes here to go in the first half. Uh, cuts the deficit in half. Now it's Belmont two, Watertown one. Why not Pedro Borges? Take a shot, he put it into the side panel. Uh, it was a, a quality half volley. I think he saw that the goalkeeper might be a little bit flat-footed, not expecting the shot. But ultimately that was really unstoppable. It was just a quality strike. My first time watching Watertown play this year. It'll be interesting if Borges is a lefty or a righty. He took that shot with his left. If he's a righty, maybe that explains that the spin wasn't um, the typical spin, you would think, from an offender shooting from that position. Well, I think sometimes on that half volley, you're just looking to get a solid strike. And, and that, that quick release on a half volley can sometimes put a strange spin on the ball. I, I don't think he intended it, but, um, you know, when you, when you hit volleys high and hard, sometimes that happens. Borges has been quite active for Watertown already. And it was rewarded with winning that ball and the nice shot. Belmont two, Watertown one, here at the eighth soccer night in Belmont. This is the first of two games. Belmont and Watertown boys varsity, girls varsity game is coming up approximately 7 p.m. tonight. One of the great things for the players here at Soccer Night is the number of ball boys and girls who are there to give them a quick ball. With the track being around Harris Field, it can take quite a while sometimes. Owen Filler again, putting pressure on. Filler really has a lot of freedom to go up the left side. The coach has given Belmont players that freedom. Uh, they're not in fixed positions as much excepting a few. Filler plays the left wing back position, meaning he'll play, you'll see him at different times, you'll think he's one of the defenders, you'll think he's a midfielder, you'll think he's a forward, depending on whether Belmont has the ball or not. Now with Belmont at the ball, Filler's way up the left, and Andrew Schreiner is able to Barely connect with them. Watertown uh, double team Shriner on the give and go, and it'll be a throw in for Belmont. Good job by the Watertown player to save a corner kick there, but it's going to go to Filler. We'll see if he attempts the long throw again. Belmont was able to win their first game against Cambridge Ringe and Latin near the end of the game off a play on a throw in from just about here. So we'll see if they have they run that same play. This is Patrick Tang with his left. 
not as fortunate as Pedro Borges just a couple minutes ago. It goes wide of the goal. Good cross to the back post, just a bit of a floater and, and nobody was there to get it. Would have been hard to direct that ball on goal. But the right idea. Filler came back on that one to win the ball back for Belmont. This is Nicholas Stefanovic, their midfield captain to Patrick Tang. Patrick got his booming shot and deflected by Watertown. That shot looked like it was going to be dangerous about the right height to try to... It looked like Patrick was looking for the right corner of the goal. Yeah, now Belmont's earned a corner kick. I believe their first corner kick of the game and another scoring opportunity with 15 and a half minutes left here in the first half. Belmont up 2-1, this is Sachel Kenkre with the shot. Belmont looking for the header, it comes back. Belmont shot and nice save by Luka Misic. Could have oh, easily Watertown. been a goal there. Nice save by the Watertown goalie. Belmont couldn't quite get on the, the initial corner kick, but it did pop out to a Belmont player with a fairly wide open shot through, through traffic. I wasn't sure who it was for Belmont who, who was able to hit that strike. Watertown now, one on three, trip there. Easy call for the referee. Getting Alex Servatopoulos on the call. This allows Watertown to get some numbers forward. I think they were struggling, really outnumbered by the Belmont defense there. So a welcome call for Watertown, an offensive chance off a, a free kick here. So you're 41 or so yards away from the goal. You try to score on this, or is this a chip for a header up? I think you have to chip it in. A little wind behind, but, you know, probably not enough to fool the goalie from that far out. Cyrus Kiani, he shoots it. Straight at Borkowski, takes a one hop. And Borkowski tries to release it quickly. Kiani, nice job to anticipate where that ball was going. I mean, he saw it all the way. Yeah, a bit of a skippy hop on the wet surface, but not a problem for the Belmont keeper there at all. A lot to expect from that far out. Referee holding it up here. I'm not, uh, it looks like there is a sub for Watertown. Number nine, Alex Farrier coming out. Good move in tight space by Kiana, who centers the ball and saved by, Bur or caught by Burkowski. It wasn't a shot, so not a save. Alex Cook there on the physical play. Physical the first time, no call. Physical the second time, uh, referee sees it. So that call will go against Alex Cook. A little bit of concern that there was a miscommunication between the Belmont keeper and the defender there, but uh, obviously the keeper was vocal and called it out and had no problem Kept grabbing his eye that on the cross. Ball. Yes, that cross. But at first you said, uh-oh. Very active and athletic goalkeeper, Thomas Borkowski for Belmont, the junior. But I've been impressed uh, just watching him thus far tonight is how quickly he looks to distribute the ball, how smart his distribution has been. Turnover there, Servatopoulos guides it out of, out past the back line. It'll be a goal kick for Belmont. And it looks like Belmont is calling a timeout here with 12 minutes left. Yes, this is in football and high school soccer. Each team, I believe, has one timeout per half. Is that right, Rob? They do, it's, it's a unique part of Massachusetts high school soccer. You don't, don't see it in other places, but uh, if you have it as a coach, you might as well take advantage of it. Talking about that distribution from the goalkeeper, we haven't seen Belmont kick it long the entire game, punt it out to, to, to midfield. They do go with the short distribution, building out of the back. Uh, they're obviously a possession team trying to be a possession team anyway and, and to control this game. I also wonder if Belmont's really good in the air. We didn't really see them crashing on that corner kick. 
Uh, of course, punting it out to midfield uh, means you're depending a lot on your team being good in the air. So we'll see if that continues through the match. What I've seen Borkowski do twice is uh, distribute it quickly in the air through his throw, not the kick, which just has less altitude on it, a little bit more accuracy, and he's looked for filler a couple of times up the left. Now, after doing it twice successfully, we saw that Watertown was onto it, so it didn't work the third time. So we'll have to come up with a new target uh, or a new way to distribute if he wants to counter a shot uh, from Watertown and counterattack quickly. And it's a good point. I mean, Belmont probably needs to mix it up a bit. They've really been dependent on moving the ball up the left side thus far. Not a lot of action on the right. We'll see if that continues through the game. Maybe that's something that uh, they're hearing from the coach in this timeout, although I expect they're also hearing, hey guys, 12 minutes left in the half. We have a lead. Let's not do anything stupid. To Finish it strong. One interesting thing is Belmont spent so much time attacking on the left side throughout the first 10 minutes of the game. It seems like Watertown then shifted some players more to their right side, Belmont's left. And I think that might have left the midfield a little bit more open for those opportunities that led to that second Belmont goal. Speaking of the left side, new player for Belmont on the left, that's uh, Andy Pinal, the number sophomore, four. I believe, number four. And we have uh, a new player up top, also number 19 for Belmont, uh, in for the double goal scorer tonight. Number 19 is Andre Leshner. Back to Borkowski, who clears it out. I think he would have preferred, in hindsight, to pick that up, distribute it on the other side of the field. I think it was a pass back, so he couldn't pick it up, but he, he ah. decided to not take the risk of uh, finding Filler on the left side, even though Filler was open and just blasted out of, out of bounds and let your defense recover. It pays off, they get a goal kick and now Belmont has control. That, that'll be a handball on Watertown free kick for Belmont. Inadvertent handball, this will be Servitopoulos. He distributes it to fellow center back Alex Duda, now over to Sam Kutzman, across the back. Nikola Stefanovic now turns, yeah. gets it to Andrew Schreiner. Now up to Patrick Tang. Patrick looking on the attack. Gets it to Pino. Watertown. It's a little obstructed here. Did they clear it out, Rob? Uh, yeah, looking. He was looking for Pino, but it, it, it went to a Watertown player who just knocked it out of bounds. Back in now to Tang. To Pino. Back to Tang. Like the one touch from Belmont there, no call. Surprising, I guess the referee thought it was a slip. We haven't seen a lot of impact from the rain or the wind. The wind is fairly mild. The field is wet, but it's, there's not a lot of active rain. So it's, it's been a pretty clean game. Kent Gray takes massive steps when he's on offense. Now that's a, his right, he's a lefty with his off foot. He, he aims for the corner of the goal, just an extra foot or two uh, to the left. Nifty move there, he just picked out the left corner but, but couldn't find it at a foot or so outside the post. I'm surprised in the last 15 minutes or so how much space Watertown is allowing Kent Kratom have in the middle of the field. Kutzman tries to go back, but it goes to Watertown, who shoots in. Borkowski, I think, was able to get his fingertips on it and deflect it wide. That's exactly what Coach Cancray was probably warning them about, uh, about in the timeout three minutes ago, Scott. I mean, a, just a bad turnover there, a uh, bit of a brain cramp, and it almost led to a Watertown goal. And with extra fans, comes extra noise. I don't know if there was communication on that. You like to have your goalie tell your back line, no, 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 no back pass. There's pressure. You know, there's a man on you. I'm not sure if Kutzman was able to hear that that time. 
And let's give these high school players a lot of credit. Both teams playing very well despite all those fans. I mean, they are not used to playing in front of a thousand people under the lights. Andre Leshner now, a one-man rush. Good, good back and forth, good battle there. Leshner versus number seven for Watertown. That's Roy Nicholas, the senior captain for Watertown. And uh, Ben Mellitz for Belmont checks in. Coming in for Alex Cook. Mellitz's second action. Mellitz coming into the right wing back position. Good step by Mellitz, or Schreiner rather. Coach Kankere giving some of his uh, players off the bench a, a chance to, to shine here. Uh, Belmont almost took a three to one lead a few minutes ago. Not quite, but we haven't seen a, a, a big drop off from the starters. A lot of substitutes in for Watertown as well. Just about seven and a half minutes, a little bit less. Here in the first half, it's a 2-1 Belmont game. Belmont scored 15 seconds in. Daniel Liu off a deflect, deflected shot by Owen Filler. And then Liu, about uh, 15 minutes in, got his second goal off a beautiful pass by Sachel Kenkrey to go up 2-0. And recently, Watertown scored their goal. It was Pedro Borges with a shot from about 30 yards out. Scott, I like to see Belmont's resolve to win the ball back on a turnover. It's really a team-wide resolve. Of course, Barcelona, famous for trying to always win a ball back within five seconds. Belmont's not quite doing that, but it really is something that you can tell that they've practiced. Now up to Kenkre, it's a five on five, it looks like. They come, give him space. He still takes the shot. Goalie was in the right spot. Good read by the keeper. He is Luka Misic, one of the five captains. Sorry, four captains for Watertown. We're closing in on five minutes left in the half at halftime a lot of our Belmont youth players and probably some from Watertown as well will get a chance to play on the field at halftime you'll maybe see some of that on the camera which is really exciting for the players to be out there under the lights with their with their coaches a lot of the high school players were out at the youth games this morning uh, reminding the players to to come tonight the Saturday morning youth games throughout Belmont. It's an exciting part of soccer night as well that the, the players don't just show up and play, they participate and volunteer to publicize the event and uh, let the younger players know that this opportunity exists once a year. Good win there. Foul on Belmont's Andrew Schreiner. I mean, that's a foul that Belmont would prefer not to have. I mean, it was really a, a two on five for Watertown. It now sets up a, a potential scoring opportunity for Watertown. The, the referee pulls out his yellow card. Yellow for, card on Schreiner, likely because they the referee thought his cleats would have struck the Watertown players. So on a yellow card in high school soccer, you have to come out. Uh, think about it a little bit he caught him from behind so in for Belmont for the first time tonight sophomore Max Katz number two looped in good header win by Alexander Duda push on Watertown will be a foul leading to a Belmont direct kick it's a hard play to score on. I don't 
like to see teams do that, just looping it in from, you know, straight in front of the goal. You really can't get anything on the header. You, you almost need to loop it in, head it backwards for a shot, but Watertown didn't seem to have that set up. Good job by the Belmont defender to, to get the first head on it, of course. Yeah, you need some sort of angle typically to get a little bit of extra momentum on the ball. And when I was coaching, I always wanted to try to keep it away from the tallest center back, who's usually in the middle of the field, so you, you aim for the left or right. Foul on Watertown, it'll be Servatopoulos who serves it up to Duda. Now Stefanovic. Back to Servatopoulos. Kent Gray, nice step and move. Now he's in open space. Tries for Pino here. Pino wins it with his left and he gets the shot, but it goes straight to the goalkeeper for Watertown. Another save by Luka Misic. Nice feed by Cancre. He, he did a good job to, to beat a couple Watertown defenders, but it always he, he had his head up and, and was really looking for the pass, and it was a nicely weighted through ball. And one of the things he does really well is get three or four players paying attention to him and not necessarily the guy they sh could be marking leading to good scoring opportunities. We saw another, that's at least his third great pass into the box here in the first half. Belmont getting a little upset at the referee's calls. Saw Kutzman, number six, very frustrated at who was given that throw in. If Belmont needs to settle a bit here with just about two minutes left. You know, just keep the ball, possess the ball, get to halftime with your two to one lead. Don't take too many risks. Don't foul. Here's a chance. Kent Gray in open space. He sees Leshner. Well defended by Watertown, gave him no space to turn. Leshner tried to hold the ball and see if some of his fellow players would get forward, but Belmont not taking too many risks at this late stage in the half. We're now under two minutes. Stefanovic here to Kent Gray. Making the Watertown midfield run a lot. Watertown's sitting back. I mean, they're obviously tired at this point in the half. There's Stefanovic. Good play by Patrick Tang. Back to Kent Gray. Now looking for Andre Leshner, won by Watertown. Belmont trying to lull a little bit of passivity for Watertown. Didn't work on that play. Not a bad idea. Late in the half. Good turn by, I think that's Borges up there. Smart foul, I would say, by Alex Servatopoulos. As Borges had a step on him. Yeah, he had him beat. I, I, I don't know that he had numbers in the in, in the box to, to find anybody on the end of a cross. Watertown's got to be pretty happy with this chance. They've, ha they've had a hard time getting enough numbers forward, just I, I think on a fitness level, and also with the Belmont attack, having them on their heels and having to expend a lot of energy defending. This is a good chance for Watertown from that angle we talked about before. Near the end of the first half, Back into the box, header on, and Borkowski with a great save. Nice uh, set up by the, on the free kick. Great header by number seven for Watertown. And That's Roy Nicholas. Roy Nicholas all the way up from his center back position. And then excellent save by Borkowski pushing it over Watertown for another rushing. corner kick. And that'll be the half. You hear the two whistles. Good win from the near post uh, on that ball by Patrick Tang. So at the half, here from Harris Field, Soccer Night in Belmont. Belmont 2, Watertown 1. Stay tuned on the video, watching many of your favorite youth soccer players in small-sided action. That's being set up now. And we will have...
Here come the little kids onto the field. <laughs> and we will have uh, an interview, we expect, uh, anticipating our second game tonight between Belmont Girls Varsity and Watertown Girls Varsity. Exciting first half, good half for for Belmont, Scott. They they have to be happy with a, a two to one lead. As we said before, they've they've only won uh, once in uh, with two ties in the first seven soccer nights. They have a good chance to get their their second victory here. If I'm Coach Kenkray, I'm thinking good half by us. I didn't like giving up that goal. But I certainly uh, feel good that for the balance of the half, we were the team in control. We started well. We finished well. For Watertown, I would feel like, you know, this could have been a runaway for Belmont once Belmont scored the second goal. Watertown gets uh, that their first goal to cut it to 2-1. And they just, Watertown started playing a grittier form of soccer. They're certainly into this game. They, the game started to become a little bit more physical. And uh, this, this is anybody's soccer match tonight. If I'm Watertown, the thing that I want to try to make sure I take away from Belmont is just the open space in the midfield. Belmont's most dangerous players, I think, are in the midfield. And you can't give them so much space to look for a nice pass into the box because they've been able to execute that uh, several times already. One that led to the second goal by Daniel Liu. Yeah, Watertown's been back on their heels defending in their own end. And, you know, that's not a great place to be. If I'm Watertown, I mean, the, the chances have come from really set pieces in the Belmont end, just putting through those 50-50 balls, either getting a call or a corner kick and having a chance. Expect to see them keep that up in the second half. So we have a special guest here at halftime of... The Belmont boys versus Belmont uh, versus Watertown. Uh, it's 2-1, and uh, joining us uh, here for halftime is the coach of the Belmont girls varsity team, Jemmy Kaj. Jemmy, welcome. Yeah, nice and nice. No, it's, it's, it's a good turnout. I thought the win was going to be a big factor. But no, it's, it's a, we have a pretty good turnout, so that was good. So last year was your first year coaching the Belmont girls varsity team. You hadn't been through a soccer night. As you were anticipating this one, besides the weather, what were you looking forward to the most? It's just those kids. You see those kids out there having fun and, 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 and those parents that, you know, some of them have been, haven't been come to an, any game this year to have this night and see them having fun and see all those kids, all the BSA kids just in the field just playing. It's a, it's a really good, it's a, it's a good thing to see for the town, for soccer in general. So it's a, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy this, this, this is happening. So this is, this is a good thing. This is clearly a big game. They all count as either one win, one loss, or one draw, but it's a big game because of what this, this evening is. How does it affect your and your players' preparation for this game? Do you try to take it like it's just an ordinary game to keep the pressure down, or do you want to get them extra excited so that they play well, better? No, I mean, the, the idea is, I mean, we go to every practice and, and every game try to try to make it what it is. Uh, I know this night is a special night, and they understand it. They understand the magnitude of the night. And, and But we, we're focusing on the game uh, more than anything. It just... We have to go in and treat it as an, any any regular season game that we have. But the night special, you can't take that away. But um, I think they uh, they're more excited than than nervous out there because um, all of them you know excited to get in the field and have a good game. And, and some of them have friends and parents and family members here you know, watching. So that's an exciting exciting night. So tell us about your team this year. Last year you inherit players who have been coached by others. You, you work them into your tactics and what you want to do on the field. Uh, and last year for soccer night, several of your um, veteran players were injured. It looks like you have a fairly healthy team. How have you been playing so far? Yeah, uh, that, uh, coming in last year, it was a little tough, um, especially not knowing you know, a lot of the girls. I uh, met them like in May, uh, uh, right before school ended. So uh, it was tough and plus, um, you know, uh, all the captain was injured last year, so we have to get like a, a new captain, new uh, younger player in the field. So it was tough to, to get my idea out. Uh, but this year, I think the main the main thing is from last year and this year. It's um, 
in the summertime, so we have a good um, program. So I give them a good program to what to do and stuff like that. So um, that helps a lot when it comes to fitness coming in the season. Uh, uh, ready to play, ready uh, uh, fitness-wise was really good. And they've been working really hard this summer. And to see, to see them out there uh, playing, getting the result, uh, um, that's, that's, more, that's, the, uh, that's the main thing I'm more proud of at um, how they've been working out through the summer to this year and, and, and seeing, seeing the difference, it, it makes a big difference, especially from the uh, uh, senior that we have this year. Uh, all of them is healthy, especially uh, Lena and Anna. So um, it's good to see them out there and having fun. There are so many ways to play this beautiful game of soccer. Every coach that I've ever seen has a slightly different uh, strategy for how he wants to play. What is, you know, without giving secrets to Watertown, um, who might be listening tonight, like, what is your coaching philosophy? What do you want the players to be doing if they're playing your system the right way? The main, the main thing is I, I just want them to believe. Like, uh, uh, me personally... Me personally, uh, what I wanted to, uh, what I want them to do, it's not more as a tactic, just them as a team, just to have fun out there. And the game of soccer, it's a game of mistakes, so everyone's gonna make mistakes. So the main thing I want them to get out of there, just just go out there, have fun, forget about the mistake. And if we do make a mistake, and they just go back and fight for the ball, and just capitalize on the other team mistakes. So I think. Uh, I think that's that's always been my philosophy of the game, and, and just play hard and have fun, and, and 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 believe, believe in yourself, believe in your teammate, and and, and believe in me. So and, and they've been doing a pretty good job thus far. So that's a that's a good thing to see. So we've heard it said in many sports that you know uh, it's half mental or it's more than half mental. Do you try to have them play and have fun and not worry so much about mistakes so that they're mentally um, playing in a different way so that they play with less fear, so that they play with more joy and anticipation and excitement so it leads to better things? Definitely, definitely. I think, uh, I think that's the main thing, especially, especially in, uh, in, the, in this game. Like if you're going to feel, have that freedom to play, uh, um, yeah, you don't want to make mistake. That's I mean, that's nobody want to mistake uh, want to make mistake. But what I always told them like, the best player in the in the in the in the, in the world make mistakes, and, and most of what I'm I want you to make mistake, and because that's the only one you're gonna learn from it. So uh, make the mistake and and have a great body language, a great attitude towards it, and never give up. Never give up and go out there and keep fighting. So we hope everybody watching right now will be watching uh, from seven to nine p.m. the Belmont Girls Varsity play the Watertown Girls Varsity. Uh, Coach Jemmy Kanj uh, from the Belmont Girls Varsity team is here with us. Um, tell us about your team. So I, Lena Marinell has been injured for most of her Belmont High School playing career, but she's playing now. She's quite a great player in the central midfield. You have a, two dynamic uh, forwards in uh, Dana Kazika and uh, Ana Santos. Tell us about the rest of your team and, uh, you know, when they're playing well, besides having fun and having joy, what are they doing with the ball? No, uh, I mean, the way we play, we, we play a uh, position games. I mean, everybody can see it. Uh, 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 the main thing is uh, uh, we, like, we, uh, everybody is hopping on the team, but everybody knows Lena and uh, always going to be the main focus of the team. And, and she's such a great player, great talent, and she's a leader. So everybody just follow her. Uh, the more better we, uh, the more better, the more better uh, she play, the uh, the the better the team plays overall. So uh, it's always good to see. We were being signaled. I was trying to read body language. I couldn't tell Jemmy what they were telling yeah. us, but. Um, uh, we're here at Soccer Night. You can see hundreds of young soccer players playing. Uh, some of these players here hopefully will be playing for you someday, uh, Jemmy. I know on the Belmont boys varsity team for sure, many of those players started in kindergarten being coached by Coach Neiman. Um, coaching has a certain joy about it, and there's a, there's a relationship coaches have with players regardless of the sport that they coach. But in coaching soccer myself versus other sports, I felt like I could... Uh, develop strong relationships with the players because you can see them through ups and downs. What do you enjoy most about coaching? I mean, I I, I played this game for a long time at different level.
coaching, um, I have a lot of great coaches. Uh, um, there's always been been there for me. Uh, but I, uh, me personally, I just uh, I just try to make it like a, a great environment when everybody come in and just have fun. But the most important is compete. And, and and I think if we, uh, I think the way I uh, I go about coaching, it just make sure everyone's in the team. The one that's playing more minute, the one that's in the bench, just everybody to enjoy themselves uh, mostly. And, and some of the kids here, they're not gonna go and play college uh, soccer. They're not gonna go and play professional soccer. So it's good to have like um, have them have a great um, time in the field, a great time with their teammates, and have a great memories to take from there. So um, it's most of the time they're not gonna remember the hard work they put in the field. They're, just, they're gonna remember just one moment, one. Uh, one one of those things so i just have them you know have them to have as much fun as possible but the most important just compete 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 on a high, uh, high level and, and 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 challenge yourself um not just in the field but in the class in the classroom and uh, because uh remember they are uh, they student athletes so student always come come first so uh, that, that was my main focus on uh, coaching just have them to have fun and and and, and just 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 make memories well perhaps you'll last as long coaching here as Paul Graham, your predecessor who coached uh, in Belmont and in other places for more than 40 years. Coach Jemmy Kanj, thanks for being with us. Good luck tonight against Watertown. Thank you, thank you. Let's show up for the, for the, girl, for the girl team tonight, 7 o'clock, so I want to see it. more crowd. Everybody just uh, be excited. It's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good night. The weather is better than we anticipated. Come definitely, on down here definitely. to Harris Field. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Just about ready here for the second half of the Belmont Boys Varsity game. We thank Coach Jemmy Kanj uh, for joining us. We hope to have Coach Neiman Kent Gray from the Boys Varsity during halftime of the girls game. Rob Gray uh, back on the broadcast with me. Uh, Rob, any insights as we, uh, in terms of what you would do for Belmont or Watertown to change tactics in any way heading into the second half? Well, first of all, Scott, I've just been done down on the field and I can tell you it's barely raining so if you've got a kid who plays soccer come on down here to the field it's a free night you can feed them pizza and hot dogs thanks to parents of music students uh, come for the girls game the end of the boys game these kids are having a great time um, I, I think Belmont's really gonna try and control the ball here Scott and connect some passes uh, but not give up the pressure. I mean, Belmont's been at its best when it's trying to score, um, not not sitting back. Watertown's looking for some breaks, uh, some skippy balls getting through the defense. Uh, in, in the Belmont half, they're going to try and play for those long balls and get, get a corner kick or, or a free kick. So I'm looking for Belmont to control the ball here. And, and, and Watertown... I'm just looking to get opportunities to score, to play it long into the Belmont half and hope something good happens. Watertown doesn't seem to be able to, to, to build the attack. Uh, maybe, maybe they'll make some changes to be able to do that in the second half. Alex Cook for Belmont on the throw here. Schreiner tries to win that ball. Watertown's able to clear it before Filler was able to get a touch on it. 2-1 Belmont. If you're just joining us for the second half, Belmont scored its first goal about 15 seconds into the game. Uh, Daniel Liu scored off a deflection. It hit his hip, I believe, off a shot by Owen Filler. About 15 minutes later, Liu scored his second goal uh, off a beautiful pass by Sacho Kenkray to put Belmont up 2-0. Then about 10 minutes later than that, Watertown uh, cut the deficit in half. It was Pedro Borges, number 11, with a, a beautiful shot over Thomas Borkowski. Both teams had other opportunities to score. Belmont had a few more than Watertown, but Watertown certainly had its chances too. It's been an exciting game so far. We expect a very competitive second half as both of these teams are gritty. And they're clearly uh, playing hard and playing to win tonight. The the first half, it got a little bit more physical as the half went on. I expect that to continue here in the second half. Patrick Tang now up to Daniel Liu. Liu given some space. Liu tries to split the defenders, is unable to do so. Watertown clears it out. One of the things that can happen if Liu tries to take on the 
the entire defense is he's going to create some space uh, for folks on the outside there if the defenders think Lou is thinking about shooting himself instead of passing. So sometimes you wonder about a play like that. Why take on three guys? But sometimes it's to set it up uh, the next time Belmont has the ball. Nice pass by Kenkre, not able to connect with Owen Filler on that. Stefanovic comes up. This is Daniel Liu. And sometimes you get a whistle you don't deserve, and Liu was looking for it uh, on that last play, not just now. Uh, he went down looking for the call just outside the 18. The ref didn't give it. Now we have a foul on Liu, Watertown. Uh, playing out. Let's see what they do here. Do they do they build something out of the back or kick it long? They're going to chip it long. You know, it's a two on three situation for Watertown. They they do control it, but they they just don't have the numbers here. Good effort by Patrick Tang there to try to win the ball for Belmont. Now Watertown, nice give and go there. This is two. Ab Abbas Khan. Belmont, I think, had four or five subs in the first half. They're back with, I think, uh, their starting lineup. That's Alex Servatopoulos, unable to control that. Now, teammate Alex Duda is able to win it. I thought Alex Cook was going to get away with that handball on that one, but... In, in the two-man referee system of Massachusetts college soccer, which is, of course, a horrible idea, <laughs> you thought he might get away with it because the referee was behind the play. Couldn't see uh, it hit his arm, but the referee from 60 yards across the field did have the call right, so I'll give them credit. Most other levels of soccer, you'll have three referees, um, a center ref and two linesmen in here. They kind of just play half of the field each, so there's only so much you can see. Can be a problem with teams that play offsides traps because they don't often get that right without the linesman. Nice job splitting three defenders by Kenkery and he takes the shot and it's right at Luka Misic. He's hit several saves tonight. It was a good opportunity by Belmont. Sure was. Neither of these teams are really playing an offsides trap. So we don't have that issue here tonight. Belmont playing a lot more on the right side of the field in the second half than I think that they did the entire first half. You can hear the Belmont pep band going again here at Harris Field. That's Kenkre being pursued by two Watertown players. Yeah, he just didn't have the numbers there. This is Alex alone. Cook with the centering pass. Thought he might have numbers further up the field, but easy save by Misic. Let's see if Watertown could build something here. Belmont gets in quick and they, they get a turnover right away. Give them credit with the high press. Very nice by Nicholas Stefanovic. Now that's Patrick Tang, another good ball win by Belmont. You see Watertown just clearing it, just getting the ball out of trouble without looking to pass, and then you know Belmont coming right back over, right, right back down into the end with a turnover. Give and go there between Ken Gray and Patrick Tang. Unable to result in a shot, it'll be Nisic on the goal kick. Substitute early on, Alex Faria coming in for Watertown and Abbas Khan coming out. Faras will play the left midfield position. Sorry, Faria, not Faras. This is Alex Cook. Another midfield turnover by Watertown there. Results in Belmont having an opportunity. Several players marking Sachel Kenkre now. It looks like they have a player marking him all over the field, number eight. Yeah, good idea to reset there. 
by Belmont. They still have the ball. This is Schreiner now up to Daniel Liu. Liu keeps it in. Centers. Looked like that was almost a handball by Watertown. Nice pass by Schreiner to Cook. Cook doesn't get enough of his foot on it. Good have been. Judgment call. It was close. Hand was by his, you know, arm was by his side. I think referees want to be 100% sure if they're going to call it and it's unclear. Good effort by Servatopoulos to try to win the ball. It looked to me like he had his foot on the ball before the bodies hit, but many referees are going to give Watertown that call. Rain picking up a little bit here at Harris Field. Let's see if Watertown has a play here or they're just going to lob it in and see what happens. Last time from about this distance, they did kick it toward the middle of the field. It looks like they're split this time. They're able to win the ball just outside the 18-yard box. This looks like it's a shooting position. And Cyrus, their captain, is Cyrus Kiani kicks it wide. Looks like we have a Watertown player down, maybe with a a cramp, calling out the trainer. Looks like that, that's number 12, Jonathan Quello, the junior forward for Watertown. Yeah, it did just look like a cramp. There didn't seem to be a collision or anything like that. Hopefully that's all it is. Team settling in here in the second half. The rain's picked up a bit now, Scott, and uh, could impact the game. 31 minutes to go. On a rainy day like this, if you're Belmont, you would welcome a two-goal lead. Uh, strange things can happen in the rain in a soccer match. Uh, we're not playing on grass or, or, or mud, um, so it's not quite as unpredictable when you're playing on turf, but. Sometimes the ball spins and skips and can get through a defense and lead to an unexpected goal. And just a little bit harder, I would think, for goaltenders when their gloves get wet. Uh, certainly, so when the ball is drilled, sometimes they can find a way to sneak through. The Watertown player looks to be okay walking off the field himself. One of the teams must have called timeout here uh, because both teams are at the bench. Now being called back on by the referees. So 2-1 here, Belmont over Watertown. Uh, we got about 31 minutes left to go in uh, soccer night. Uh, the first of a doubleheader here tonight. Uh, at approximately 7 p.m. it'll be the Belmont girls versus the Watertown girls. Good match. It's gonna be a good match, the girls match. Stick around, you'll be able to see it here. Come down to the stadium if you'd like to see it in person, even better. Now, that's Owen Filler up to Daniel Liu. I should mention, Scott, that uh, soccer night in Belmont always alternates year to year with the, the girls going first one year, the boys going first the next year to keep it even. Stefanovic in traffic. They call, I think, a handball on him. It'll be Watertown's um, kick, and this will be uh, Missage. We'll be joined in a minute by Rob's co-founder, John Carson of Soccer Night in Belmont. This is Sachel Kenkre in the offensive end. Watertown steps up at the last minute and is able to win possession. Nice play, but they keep giving Kenkre a lot of space. It's gonna, it, it likely will burn him at some point. John Carson, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, thanks for you and Rob for starting Soccer Night in Belmont. As Rob said at the beginning, we had rain and 
Soccer Night in Belmont won, and it took until Soccer Night in Belmont eight for the rain to come back. <laughs> it's a rite of passage for the new guys. So with Pedro and Sean taking it over, you have to start out with the rain. It only gets better from here. So thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. So been an exciting competitive game thus far. Watertown and Belmont played a great boys game last year, and this one is as competitive. Last year was scoreless, and it went to PKs. Uh, more exciting offensive action tonight, but both teams competing hard. What have you been seeing about the action, the communication on the field as you've been walking around? I am amazed at how this has become what it is, and people understand what they're walking into. Right? I mean, look at across, across the pitch there is all the Watertown fans that are here on a rainy night. <laughs> this is unbelievable. But I think everyone has, you know, come to take this as a community event and has really, uh, really love it. And, and I'm, I'm glad they're all here for the right reason, right, to enjoy this game. Daniel Liu with a nice reception and turn. It'll be a Belmont corner kick. Belmont dangerous on the corner. So, John, when you first started uh, Soccer Night in Belmont with Rob, your son was playing, correct? It was. It was the first. He was a junior uh, here, um, and it was about 600 people in attendance, I think was the, the number. And it, it started, it, you know, the following year was a dream come true for him. He ended up scoring the winning goal and seven minutes left in the game. Kent Gray on the corner goes straight to Misich, and... One of the traditions you started early was awarding a player of the game. Um, where was that in the the thinking of making this night a night? Certainly everybody will remember. You know, it's funny. The high school kids now talk about, <laughs> can they be that player of the match? And I, I just, it just motivates them to really play the, their heart out uh, in this game. So I'm happy that we've, we've added that. Um, I think it's a nice little touch. Uh, again, I, I want to say one thing which is to, to commend you and others that have spent all these years uh, committing time to, to make this event what it is so thank you for doing that and it's certainly a, a big thank you to Pedro Santos and, and Sean Goulding uh, for picking it up and again clearly they didn't skip a beat uh, in making the night happen. So talking about that player of the game it's always been a thrill when that player wins it you know most <laughs> high school soccer games don't end with a player of the game so just to be recognized for any game, not just Soccer Night in Belmont, and we've seen it often in the boys' games that it's going to uh, uh, one of the players on the visiting team. Um, and up until this year, I think it's always been known as the Puma Man of the Match, but it gets a new name, uh, the boys' um, player of the game. It'll be the John Carson player of the game. Uh, that's a little, is that awkward for you? How, do, how does that make you feel that that's one of the ways that what you and Rob started uh, for the girls' game, it'll be the Rob Gray player of the game. But tonight, you'll be presenting uh, the player of the game award uh, to whoever is selected here in the boys' match. When I got that phone call, it was one of the most humbling experiences I've ever had. I mean, to, to want to attach our name to this uh, for as long as it, we can make it happen was the coolest thing. I, I really, really was happy to get that phone call, uh, not just for me. You know, it's a representation to our own kids, right? Um, that you put time, effort, and energy in, and people have a great time, and then you get recognized for it. So I think it's uh, it's it's cool. It's just a great, great um, opportunity to have that happen, and I and I strongly appreciate that Sean and Pedro thought of it. And it's uh, everybody who comes to a night like this remembers it from the kindergartner who just played on mid at midfield. Uh, during halftime to every player that steps on the pitch. Uh, certainly the coaches love playing here. But for that uh, individual on one of in, in one individual in both of the games to win the player of the game, certainly they're going to remember that game for the rest of their life. There's no question. There's absolutely no question. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, I was talking to Sean and Pedro. They went and talked to the Belmont players yesterday after practice to really kind of explain to them what the night is all about and, and why we do what we're doing. Um, they both said they couldn't have uh, had a, a better feel from those players and how much appreciation they have. Ken Cray almost on a break in on that. Nice aggressive play by him. Watertown wins it back. It goes back to Missage. Continue, John. And, and they... Uh, 
they were just so thankful for, for making this happen. And I remember the first night that we had this event and a young girl walked over to me and she was a senior and uh, smiling ear to ear and just purposely walked over to say, I just want to thank you for, for putting on this night for us. This is just something special. And that was year one. So I can only imagine the smiles that have come since then. Nice play by Kent Gray. He passes to Daniel Liu now to Schreiner. Schreiner doesn't get everything he wants on that, and he kicks it high. But just watching Sachel Kent Gray on that, like I remember him as a kindergarten soccer player. Rob and I were talking in the pregame about that. He was coached by his dad, who is now coaching the Belmont Boys Varsity. And so many of these Belmont boys I saw grow up through Belmont Second Soccer and Belmont Soccer Association had the privilege to coach many of them. Wonderful kids. Yep. Not just great soccer players, but wonderful kids too. And um, it's just great for the town to now know that many of those kindergartens th through fourth graders who were on the field are going to be on this pitch at a future soccer night. There's no question there's somebody on these benches that, that was a ball boy, a ball girl, or, or were, were mascots eight years ago. I, I was impressed earlier. I got a text message. And I haven't seen them here yet. But the former head coach, Brian Bashilia is here. Um, for the in boys. In attendance for the boys. Yep. And, and he, wanted, he wanted to be here, brought his own son. Uh, so that was a cool thing to see that uh, having been, having, having coached this originally when we started, uh, it's nice to see him even here with, with no kids here. What are a couple of things, John, that uh, are really awesome about walking on the field for this and being in this environment that you and maybe Rob and Pedro and Sean, you, you're the only ones that can notice because everybody else is watching the soccer game. But what, what are a couple of some interesting things that happen at soccer night that you'd want to give people a behind-the-scenes peek? I'm not sure if you caught it on film or not. I think one of the most powerful... One of the most powerful messages is when you see those kids run through the gates at halftime and to play on the under the lights. That is that is fantastic. Uh, that's one. I think the other is, um, you know, we have a really strong message here of um, this is not meant to be a fundraiser. And there, there are moments and times that you have to do fundraisers. Watertown clears it out, looking uh, to turn. Continue, John, about fundraising. Yeah, so this, we, we've, set the stake in the ground that this is meant to be a community event and it's not meant to be a fundraiser um buy some pizza buy some popcorn buy some water that's about it uh, but we're not selling anything here we want people to be here and, and enjoy this as a community and uh when you hear people talking on the sidelines you can clearly see it nice move by Kent Gray. tries to hit the through ball can he get it to owen filler referee calls a push on filler Obviously, organizers like Pedro and Sean, they don't pick the referees. No, <laughs> they do not. That was a okay. close call. It's justifiable, but close. I got to teach them that. How do you pick your referees in advance of the game? Hey, they did a good thing is they got the referees their own parking spots this year. Because in years past, they've always been late because they didn't know what to park. There's Interesting. Too many cars. Process improvements you don't think about. That no. is a behind-the-scenes thing. <laughs> it's big. A lot more parking now at Belmont High than the last couple of years due to the high school construction, but a lot of the spots are a little bit further away from here than just right next to the stadium. And in rainy conditions, the, the ones right next to Harris Field filled up uh, well before 4.30. You know, one of the other things I would say about what you see here that are behind the scenes is we have freshmen and JV players from the boys and the girls teams that that are responsible for welcoming people and fans into the Harris Field and handing out rosters. Daniel Liu with the turn. He can get the shot off, and it goes high and wide. Not a bad opportunity there. Uh, he would like to get that back. And by having these freshmen and JV players participate by doing the tattoos and handing out rosters and putting smiles on people's faces when they come in the door, they're they're committing time to this event. They they want this event to be successful because they want to play in it someday. And so I think it's a nice little touch that we we've added in over the years, and and they jump in um, with both feet to make it happen. So it's great. Final question, John. What are you seeing in the game? What do you expect for the rest of these 
uh, 20 minutes here in the second half. I got to tell you, with that start, I was <laughs> I was concerned it was going to be a blowout. But boy, Watertown has come back strong uh, and played uh, really, really well. Um, you know, for me, I'm one of those players that I want my town to win, but I wanted to be competitive. And right now, it's competitive. Um, it, it could be a slip, one one error with this wet ground, whether by the goalkeeper or defender. And that, that's going to decide the game, I think. So we'll see. Game I expect to open up a little bit in the final 20 minutes as just uh, sheer fatigue starts to fit in. We should see some more scoring opportunities from both teams. This is Cyrus Kiani for Watertown. Any final words, John? No, again, just thank everyone. I wanted to say thank you. It's It's been an honor to participate in this and, and do this with the town, uh, with the school administration, with the all the parent volunteers. It's just, <laughs> this is what it's about, right? This is why we live in Belmont. It's just a great, great uh, town, and I'm glad we're able to be part of it. So thanks again for continuing the uh, what we put in place for so many years. He's John Carson. You'll next see him on the field right after the game is done, awarding uh, the player of the game to either a Belmont or a Watertown player. John, thanks so much. Thank you. 19 minutes uh, and change left to go in the second half. Belmont uh, still up to, to one. No scoring yet in the second half of this game as the rain picked up. Perhaps that's one of the reasons. I think uh, a stronger reason is that both teams have kind of figured out what the their opponent is trying to do offensively and they've just tightened things up. Here's a chance for Belmont on the break. Nikola Stefanovic. And that's a pretty lousy foul right there. I think we're going to have our third yellow card of the game. Scott. His legs were sweeped out from underneath. Hopefully he's okay. Co-captain for Belmont. Watertown player was putting his hands up like he didn't underst understand the call. Perhaps he thought he got ball on that. He's arguing with his coach. Uh, that is Captain Michael Jokic. Because of, it's a, because of the yellow card, he'll need to sit out a little bit. Let's see what Belmont does here. Good chance to score. Stefanovic Wet ball is, coming into the box yep. from an angle. Good to see Stefanovic uh, running off the field. He's had some uh, injuries the last couple of years, so he hasn't gotten as much game action as he would have wanted. Belmont Hopefully. sending their tall targets into the box. They're looking for a header. Ken Cray with it. it. Belmont is not able to get a head on it. Watertown deflects it to their goalie who picks it up. Max Katz returned uh, to, to the game to take Stefanovic's spot. I don't think Ken Cray got that ball in as, as deep as he wanted to and it just went off a Watertown head right to the goalie. Filler attempts to connect with Daniel Liu. It bounces to Watertown. Good battle in the air. You see a lot more shirt grabbing in the second half than I think we did in the first half. Let's see that if Belmont plays fast. They do. Good step by Kenkray. Takes the easy pass there to Schreiner. Turnover there for Belmont. Now Kiani tries to go up. Borkowski playing a little sweeper keeper, meaning way out of the box. Could only use his feet, not his hands. Clears it wide. Looks like Watertown's content to play the long ball. Try and get a stoppage in the Belmont half, whether it be a throw in or a corner kick or a free kick and, and score off of that. Belmont's definitely looking to score here, but they haven't been able to, to put together an attack in the Watertown end in this half as, as well as they did in the first half, Scott. Patrick Tang coming back into the game, replacing Tomas Estrada Donahue. 17 minutes left here. Belmont would love a 3-1 to one cushion in this 2-1 to one game. 
Schreiner now over to Filler. Into the box, looking for Lou. Lou's able to get ahead on it, but. Right idea there, Lou realizing he couldn't get any leverage with a header on goal, uh, looked for the player cutting in, who just couldn't quite get on the end of it. And now it looks like filler to Patrick Tang. Patrick wasn't sure what the best decision was on that, so it goes back to filler. Got a Belmont player down. We're probably gonna get a whistle and a stoppage here. Can't see who that is yet. The player's getting up. Looks like he's walking it off. Maybe a Charlie horse based on the limp. Yeah, it's number two, Max Katz. He'd come in uh, when Nikola Stefanovic got injured. Stefanovic returns to the field to take Katz's spot. You can see in the distance, Scott, the girls team, uh, teams, plural, warming up for our second half of the double header, kicking off at 7 p.m. also against Watertown. Pre-game festivities starting about 20 minutes before that. Same pageantry as the first game. We will have interviews between games, so if you're watching us on Belmont Media, thank you for joining us tonight. Please keep the game on throughout halftime. And we'll bring you interesting conversation about soccer. So much about this night that is worth talking about. So much about Belmont High School sports worth talking about. We hope to have the athletic director for Belmont High Athletics, Adam Pritchard on with us in between games. Depending on lots of things, we may have some of the Belmont High School boys varsity players too. We'll see. How's that for a tease, Rob? Many surprises upcoming, potentially. We might also be surprised. So this game taking a little while to get re-going. Looks like they're sending a Watertown player off. I wonder if he got a yellow card too. I couldn't, I didn't see the yellow card. Did I didn't both? see, I, it didn't look like a collision, but it, it happened off the ball. So could have been. Nice move there by Kankray up to Schreiner. No, dangerous. dangerous pass by Alex Duda there. But Belmont didn't give up. Once it was turned over, they won it back, which is what you want to see. Now Stefanovic. Filler. I'd like to see Belmont switch the field here. Now to Schreiner, they think, I thought they heard you, but he kept it going on the same side, on the far side, instead of turning it. Yeah, the right back was looking to overlap, but uh, Schreiner had his back to him. Looks like uh, Belmont is intentionally trying to stretch Watertown's defense out a little bit, maintain a little bit more possession as the legs get tired on both teams. Kankray with the centering pass. Deflected out, it'll be a Belmont corner. My unofficial tally makes that about four or five corners for Belmont. Looks like Patrick Tang is gonna take this one. Both teams set up in the box. Tang with the dress. Bounces around in the box, goes out past the goal line. It'll be a Watertown goal kick. Nice ball by Tang. He's able to get a teammate's head on it. And I thought it went off Belmont, but it went off Watertown, it looks like, or the referees are trying to discuss it. Gonna have a little conference here. 
corner for Belmont. They'll take it. They'd love to put this in the back of the net. Kent Gray's going to take this one. Into the box. One far out by Tang. Tang trying to keep it in on the side. He's able to get it, I thought. Belmont with the shot, another deflection, not there, but Cancre wins it in the box. He gets some space, he takes a shot, and he puts it in! What a shot! Watertown living dangerously, letting Belmont have multiple opportunities down there. Cancre just in the right place at the right time to first win the ball, then nice move to his left, he is a lefty. Then he shoots the ball in the corner of the net. No goalie in high school soccer would have been able to save that. Belmont goes up, three to one. He bent it right in the, in the side panel, just inside the post, Scott. Uh, you know, perfect shot for a left footer. Very calm and collected, took the touch to his left and finished the business. Big goal by Belmont. You were saying that just a few minutes ago, Rob, that uh, if you're Belmont, you've been close to uh, getting that two goal spread which feels a lot different in the way that you play than a one goal spread and Belmont finally gets it up now three to one. Many coaches say the most dangerous lead is a two goal lead however I don't think that applies with 12 minutes left in the game. Belmont has to be very very happy to have that cushion here. To state the obvious every coach on the planet would take a two goal lead over a one goal lead unless it's in practice and he wants to teach his team how to, or to teach her team how to play with pressure. I think Belmont can feel the victory here. They're, they're not gonna let down. They wanna be hoisting the Phoenix Cup here in about 12 minutes, if at all possible, and having a big, big celebration on the field. I know Coach Ken Crane, in addition to being a great soccer coach, is a numbers guy. I'm sure he's aware of the record that you talk about, that the Belmont boys haven't had as much success as they would want on soccer night in Belmont, and he wants to come away with Belmont's second victory for the boys in eight tries on soccer night. And it also gets them to a, to a winning record on the season if they win here tonight. They're 1-1-1 one, one, and one now. Always love to have that winning record. Maybe build a little bit of a lead before they come up against the, the teeth of the Middlesex League in, in Lexington and Arlington. They've already played Winchester once. But uh, Belmont has playoff hopes this season. Uh, but those six games against the, the three top 20 ranked teams within their division means that you got to win the games you should win to, in order to have the numbers to make the playoff. We'll ask him when he joins us in the halftime for the girls game, but I'm um, pretty confident the answer will be yes when I ask Coach Kent Gray, if your team, if everything comes together, can you make a deep run in the state tournament? And I'm sure he will say yes. He loves this team. The players love each other. There have been many of them friends since they were first in preschool. And uh, they spend a lot of time together. They play a lot of soccer together off season. And he's hoping all that all those years of chemistry formation personally and soccer-wise will Nice ball off. here. That is a phenomenal Fillers pass through. by Kank Ray to Filler. He shoots. It gets deflected over the goal. That should be a corner kick. The referee is indicating goal kick, but uh, I, I think it was deflected off the Watertown player. I agree. It was deflected off some player to go over the goal for sure. Nice ball through, and uh, Filler at full speed almost made something happen there. 40-yard pass, precisely hit by Kent Gray. Here's Filler again, very aggressive on the left side. He's got it. Can he keep it in? Looks like Not it quite. was off Filler, Watertown's throw. If you're Watertown, at what point do you think of dropping a forward, of dropping a, a back and adding a forward here, Rob? Well. It doesn't matter if you lose three to one or four to one. So I would say about a minute ago, but they but they haven't done it yet. Just want to add a little bit more offense to try to narrow this deficit. Ball into the 
box, headed by Servitopoulos. He was trying to back head it, and it looks like he topped headed it, and it went out. So it'll be Watertown to put it back in play. Nicely done. The ball won by Tang. Back to Servitopoulos into the middle of the field to Stefanovic. Filler. Watertown giving him a little bit more space. Now, they've been in pursuit a lot of the second half. Looks like a corner. Another chance for Belmont. And also a chance to, to burn time. Clock ticks while we await the corner kick. Down towards nine minutes. Belmont with a two goal lead. They'll take their time. Much of um, the last 10 minutes has been down in this area of the field. Watertown living dangerously with Belmont close to their goal. Belmont has a lot of strong shooters. Tang into the box. Servitopoulos and Cook with the head. And it just goes wide. Cook thought he had that one. Pretty good chance there. I mean, just outside the, the far post, the, the header was bending back towards the goal. Two Belmont players competing against the ball. If either one of them uh, had it cleanly, uh, they may have been able to angle the head a little bit more precisely. Daniel Liu pursuing in the left corner. Liu might be able to keep this in. Can he? He is not able to do so. Alex Cook was there. Lou was able to center that ball. If I'm Belmont at this point, I'm just trying to get the ball on the ground in these wet conditions, control it, connect some passes, let the clock tick down. No fouls. Keep it clean. Try to keep it in Watertown's end if you're Belmont. Stefanovic attempts to win it. It deflects off of him. Watertown's throw. Belmont up three to one. About seven and a half minutes left in the half. Watertown coach is shouting something to his back line. Maybe he wants him to step up a little bit, put a little bit more pressure on Belmont. This is Schreiner. Keeps it in along the side. Watertown has done a nice job one-on-one -on -one pursuing Belmont's talented forwards. Belmont will be content with running a little clock here when all these passes will go out. And we have a timeout. Uh, first official timeout, I think, of the second half, Rob. I think there was one related to an injury earlier, but um, I'm not sure quite who called this, but one of the two coaches, perhaps both of them. I think it was Belmont likely want to reset here. So if your coach, uh, Neiman Kankray, what are you telling your team? Well, it'll be interesting to see whether he, he gets some new players into the game, gives them a chance to experience soccer night, just wants to instruct them all together uh, about what he expects in this last six minutes and 31 seconds to, to preserve the lead. I don't know if he'll go there or, or just stick with mostly his starters, but I think the main thing he's telling them is be smart, uh, don't rush, don't foul. And if you're Watertown, you're down two. So either tactically or positionally or player-wise, I think you want to you want to try something. You have nothing to lose, as you were talking about. Um, so a different method of attack, a different uh, number of forwards in the game. What would you do if you were Watertown? Well, I, I think they've just got to get more players up top and and try and chip it through long at this point I, they don't really have the time or the um, 
possession abilities we haven't seen thus far in this game under the conditions to, to possess the ball and build an attack. But right now they've just got to defend this uh, Belmont chance with a throw in deep in their end. This is Patrick Tang. Nice little touch to himself up to Schreiner. He called off sides, not sure about that, but he called it. Referee was right there. Nice little trap there for Watertown. Alex Duda with the ball win now to Cook. Back to Schreiner. Turnover there. What Watertown would want, but Belmont again pursues it when they lose the ball. And in for Belmont, who kicked it out of bounds there was number 22. That is Bowden Harris, first time into the game, senior. Good to, as you were anticipating, Coach Kenkray getting some players who haven't seen any game action yet tonight in. This is Bowden Harris. Belmont kicking it a little bit longer now than they have, uh, but it, if it took a different bounce, it would have sent Alex Cook in. Competed hard on that. It looks like they're going to call the foul on Watertown for the collision. Another chance for Belmont here. They'll let 30 seconds tick off the clock before they take this, though. We just reached the five-minute mark, so the game is now on the referee's watch. So for Kent Cray, one of the best in the Middlesex League at free kicks like this. He's looking, wow, uh, goalie could have caught that. He headed it out. Interesting. Back, back post, I, I, he's a talented player and takes the free kicks. I'm not sure you don't want a right-footed player taking it there, so it's, so it's the ball's bending the back and you can head, head it in the goal. That's, that's bending towards the goalie the whole time. Good win by Watertown. One of their best opportunities of the second half. They take a shot. That's Borges again. Had quite a good game for Watertown. Back to Borkowski. We've spoken several times about Borkowski's distribution in this game, making Watertown think that he was going to punt it away. Yep. Ops to possess it, distribute it to Another short play defenders. there. The outlet uh, from Belmont goes out of bounds, so Watertown throw. This is their chance. They should mass some numbers up there. Much of the last 15, 20 minutes has been in Watertown's defensive end, so Watertown will be happy to see it in Belmont's end here. Cross in. Nice play by Bowden Harris. Belmont um, trying to just clear it a little bit quickly uh, now. Watertown is anticipating that. Watertown just a little bit more aggressive to the ball, down two. Somehow this became a goal kick. I'm not quite sure how, but. In these rainy conditions, we, uh, we have to be stretching our necks a little bit here. Can't see it on camera, but we uh, don't have the same view that you all do uh, when it comes to some of the corners of the field here. Only about two minutes left in this game. Belmont just looking to get the ball back here. Watertown's looking for a crack. Filler just puts it in the parking lot there so Belmont can reset, get their numbers back. Starting to see several cars in the lot with their lights on. I think that's because they're coming for the girls game uh, coming up uh, about 25, 30 minutes after this game concludes. There's a lot of action in between games. Please don't turn off your stream of Belmont Media. We'll have the presentation of the player of the game. We And this ball is won by Kenkray. It's now a six on three. He hits Schreiner. 
Schreiner taken down and he's down in the box. I'm surprised that is not a call. They're, they're calling it now. He was wiped out in an offensive end. That was not, to me, an attempt on the ball. I hope Schreiner is okay. Coming in for Belmont is number nine. That'll be Maud Abu Tayan, a senior. Schreiner still down in the box. Several of his teammates around him. It's been a nice, clean game. You know, there's, it's been physical play, a few uh, jersey pulls, things like that. Uh, that was a really physical frustration play, I think, and uh, I hope Andrew Schreiner is fine with that. And a close game. I mean, Belmont really only got the lead. They had a one goal lead for a lot of this game. Jaden Yan, number 20, freshman, with his first action of the game. I haven't seen all of Belmont's uh, games. I don't know if this is his first varsity action as a freshman. Schreiner up, walking under his own power. That's great to see, looking at his elbow. Um, it's frustrating, you think you're going in <laughs> to score a goal perhaps, and then you end up on your back when you feel like somebody sweeps the leg. And it'll be put back into play by Watertown. We think under two minutes left to go in the game, but the clock is kept by the referees on the field. We're never exactly sure how much time. Watertown fighting hard to the end. Gotta like their competitiveness and grit. It's been a good game, but... Chance here. Spinner Ball is high, up. off the crossbar and over. Going to have a corner kick. Watertown's maybe last chance to score. And they play it short. Well defended by Filler. Corner kick for Belmont. Right soon after the game, we'll have what used to be known as the Puma player of the match. From this point forward in these boys games at Soccer Night in Belmont, it will be the John Carson player of the match in honor of the co-founder of Soccer Night in Belmont, John Carson. And John himself will be able to present the award. A lot of players for Belmont have had excellent games. Owen Filler's been around so often. Uh, offensive action. Daniel Liu, two goals. The first off a Action by Filler. Sachel Kenkre with many great passes and a nice shot to get Belmont's third goal. The players are celebrating. We've heard the three whistles. That means the game is over. Belmont goes to two, four, and two in these eight soccer nights uh, for the boys. Coach Neiman Kenkre gets his first win at Soccer Night in Belmont. Sure, he'll be excited to talk about it at halftime of the girls' game. The Belmont players mob each other at close to mid, uh, middle midfield here. Some of the Belmont players have rain ja jackets on. They got so tired of getting soaked. But Fun the players to see, in the Scott. Field, Fun to see. You know, the bench is into it. You could see them, you know, on their tippy toes as, as we counted down the last seconds of the game. And we can see 
John Carson down there now at the 50 yard line with Sachel Kentgray, the first John Carson Soccer Night in Belmont player of the match. Congratulations to him. He did a great job uh, controlling the ball in the middle, distributing the ball. Many, many through, three ball, uh, through balls. Of course, uh, he had the goal that, the third goal, which put the game out of, out of reach and a lot of other opportunities to score as well that he created for himself and his teammates. And he, um, he controlled Belmont's offense. Uh, it ran through him, so many great opportunities, ran through Sachel Kentgray. Uh, his goal was beautiful, but he had three or four equally beautiful passes. Um, one I remember connecting with Fuller, Filler from about 40 yards out. Um, unreal. And his nice pass to Daniel Liu led to the second goal. So for all of those reasons, I think... It's Sacho Kenkray as the player of the match. Now the teams will line up for their handshakes. And... Yeah, Kenkray, uh, he plays with his head up. You can see him taking a peek before he even receives the ball, knowing who's open and what he's going to do with it next. And uh, when he carries the ball, he, he does a good job protecting it. He had some... Very good fakes, one to set up a shot, which he, he missed just wide left. He could have easily had two goals tonight. So great job by him. If, if Belmont can control the middle of the field like they did against Watertown this evening, they'll, they'll have a good season. Watching in the handshake line just how much respect the teams had for each other. You can tell the Watertown coach was almost hugging every Belmont player throughout. Um, great to see Coach Kasha for Watertown saluting Belmont on a great game. Um, Here comes the cup, Scott, I think pretty the soon. Phoenix Cup. The, the Belmont players look to be putting on Soccer Night in Belmont t-shirts and that the Phoenix Cup is about to be presented by Sean Goulding and Pedro Santos, the uh, the heads of Soccer Night in Belmont. We don't have the little uh, bombs of uh, cray paper coming up like the, the Champions League, I think. But I expect them to raise the cup for coming sure soon once they salute the refs. I mean, we'll see. Keep an eye on the horizon. Maybe there'll be fireworks. I don't know. So the captains for Belmont, Nikola Stefanovic, Sachel Kenkray, will will receive the cup from Pedro and Sean and lift it on behalf of their teammates. The Belmont boys will be happy to have their name engraved on that cup with a win. It's capped in the high school now in the trophy case. This will be just the second time in eight years of soccer night in Belmont that uh, the boys have the win. Of course, they have two draws as well. Most of these players in the Watertown players uh, were involved in the draw last year. Here we go. Oh, hold on. I see smoke. Maybe there is confetti. <laughs> Here they go. Your Belmont High Varsity Boys Soccer Team winners of the eighth Soccer Night in Belmont here in 2023. I like the smoke. How about that? There's the cup being hoisted. The girls hope to do the same in about two more hours. Congratulations to the to the Belmont boys. They rise to two one and one on the season, and they've they've won the big game, the game under the lights with the big crowd. So we'll take a short break, and then we'll have some halftime guests for you. The final score from Harris Field in the first half of the doubleheader of Soccer Night in Belmont. It's Belmont three, Watertown one. <laughs> 